Hey there, I once had a video on here where I demonstrated how you can create an animated hamburger icon directly in Webflow without having to use a Lottie icon. Well, I recently rewatched that video and something big caught my attention. I'll play that portion of the video right now and tell me if anything catches your attention. So I'm going to drop in a div and I'm going to call this div menu wrapper. And I'm going to set it to flex vertical center center and I'm going to give it a width of 40 pixels and a height of 40 pixels. And in this menu wrapper, I'm going to add in three divs. These three divs are going to act as the icon. So a top, middle and bottom. Did you catch it? I used the standard div block for my menu button. This is a major accessibility issue because there is no way for the user to focus on that menu button using the tab key. So I made a big mistake. Now I know accessibility is an ongoing process and what is considered best practice is always changing. So I wanted to say that I'm making this revised version using the best of my knowledge at this time. If anything should change, I will note it in the description below. Now in the previous video, I made a custom nav using divs but this time around, I'm going to use the standard Webflow nav component. And there's actually a reason for that that I will discuss later on in the video after we build out our icon animation. So to speed it up a little bit, I went ahead and added in the Webflow nav bar component, took out the default container, added in the container I'm using throughout my project, added in the logo, and this is where I am right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to where the menu button is. And I'm just going to delete the icon that comes with it. And inside this menu button, I'm going to add in a div that I'm going to call menu wrapper. So I like to use a shortcut control E. I believe it's command E on the Mac. So I'm going to do control E and add in a div. I'll give it the class name of menu wrapper. And now you're probably wondering what is the difference between this and the old video since the old video had menu wrapper as well? And the main difference is that menu wrapper is now nested inside a button. Well, button, quote unquote. This makes it so the user can focus on the menu wrapper by hitting the tab key. Well, they're really going to be focused on the menu button, but for lack of a better term, focused in on the, the icon. And this menu wrapper, I'm going to give it a display of flex, vertical, align center, and justify center. Now that I have my menu wrapper set up, I'm going to add in three divs that are going to act as the three lines of my hamburger icon. So I'm going to do control E, add in a div, and I'm going to give it a class name of top. And I like having my icons have a width of 24 pixels wide. It's just what I'm accustomed to. Feel free to adjust it as you see fit. So I'm gonna make it 24 pixels wide. And now for the height, I'm gonna give it a height of two pixels. And keep this measurement in mind because this two pixel measurement is actually gonna be important once we get to the animation portion of the tutorial. And I'll scroll down and I'll give it a color of the same navy I'm using throughout my project. I'm going to then duplicate this top div two times, which will be the middle and bottom portion of my icon. So I do control C and then control V and then one more time. I'm going to go to the second one and I'm going to duplicate the class and rename it as mid. And I'm going to go to the third one, duplicate it, and give it a class name of BOT for bottom. And now at this point, you should have something that looks like this. All three, all three lines are stacked on top of one another. So to separate them out, let's select our middle icon. And we'll give it 8 pixels margin on the top and bottom. So I'll go 8 pixels on the top, and then 8 pixels on the bottom. And now you have something that looks like this, which better resembles the hamburger icon we're going for. Now that we have that set up, we can set up our animation. Now with the native Webflow navbar component, 
you can apply the animation to the nav bar itself for when the nav menu opens, or you can apply the on-click animation to the button. I'm more accustomed to using the menu button for an on-click animation, so I'm going to apply a mouse click animation. So I'm going to select the menu button, and I'm quickly just going to give it a class of menu-btn. And I'll just remove the native 18 pixel padding. And I'll give it 0.5 padding, 0.5 rem padding all the way around. So now with this menu button selected, I'll go to the interactions tab. And I'll set up a mouse click interaction. And for the first click, we're going to start an animation. And I'll give it a name of menu open. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select our top line. We'll go to actions and we'll select the move. And we're going to move this 10 pixels down. Make the easing out court. And so you're probably wondering where I got this 10 pixel measurement from. Well, if you remember, when we were designing it, we gave the middle line 8 pixels margin on the top and bottom. And each line has a height of 2 pixels. So the 10 pixels is the 8 pixel margin with the 2 pixels added on. So that's where I got that 10 pixel measurement. The 8 plus the 2. And so now I'm going to do the same thing to the bottom line. I'm going to select the bottom, create the move interaction, and I'm going to have this one move up negative 10 pixels. Do the same easing out court. So at this point, we have it where the top and bottom are meeting in the middle. But before we rotate them, we have to do something with that middle line Otherwise, our X icon is going to have a line through it. So we're going to select the middle line. And we're going to set the opacity to go down to 0. I'll use the same easing of out court. I'll have it go with the previous action, but I'm going to give it a delay of 0.5. Now at this point, we can set up the rotation for the top and bottom. So I'm going to select the top icon again. And I'm going to go rotate. And I'm going to rotate this 45 degrees on the Z axis. So I'll go 45. Give it the same easing of out court. I'll have it with the previous action. But this time, I'm going to give it a delay of 0.8 because I like giving it like a slight hesitation to it. So that way it collapses down, slight pause, and then rotates. So I'm going to give it a delay of 0.8. And I'm going to do the same for the bottom. I'm going to rotate it. I'm going to give 45 degrees this time because I need it to be the opposite. Use the same easing of out court. And at this point, we should have something that looks like this. So we'll save that. And we have our first portion of the animation. Now we're going to set up the second click when it reverts back to the hamburger icon. So we're going to go on second click. We're going to start an animation. We'll add a new animation, and we'll call this menu out. And now remember, at this time, we have to reverse it. So we're going to select the top. And we're going to rotate it back to 0. So we're going to rotate it 0 degrees on the Z. Use the same easing of out court. And repeat it for the bottom. So I'll select the bottom. Set up a rotate. 0 degrees on the Z out court for easing 
and now we have it where they're going to rotate back to their original flat horizontal look. Now we have to bring the opacity back to 100 for the middle line. So I'm going to select the middle line, create an opacity, bring this back up to 100, use the same easing of out quark, but I'm going to give it a delay of 0.5. So it's going to go with the previous action and a delay of 0.5. Now, before we push them back up to the top and bottom respectively, usually when icons animate back to their original position, in most cases the animating out tends to be slightly quicker. So I'm not going to add in that 0.8 second delay, I'm just going to keep it at 0.5. So I'm going to select that top line, add a move transformation, Bring it up 0 pixels on the Y, set the easing to out court with the previous action, and keep the delay at 0.5. And now I'm going to do the same for the bottom. I'm going to select the bottom, set up a move interaction, 0 pixels on the Y, out court with the previous action, 0.5 delay. And I'll just make sure that all of them have the out court applied and it does so I'll save this and then when we preview it we have our open menu which turns into the X and then the reverse when it goes back to the hamburger icon now about this button the reason I opted for the native Webflow nav this time around is because Webflow adds some code to the nav bar and specifically the menu button to make it more accessible if I inspect this button, you'll notice that there are some attributes applied. You'll see that there's a roll equals button and a tab index of zero. The reason why that's important is because Webflow doesn't actually have an HTML button tag for us to use. And we're really just using hyperlinks. So we either have to use the native Webflow nav component, which adds that functionality to the menu button, or add in the custom attributes ourselves to give it the functionality of a button. And in case you're wondering, there is a slight technical difference between the two. A button element in HTML is primarily used to perform an action when something is clicked, like when you submit a form, open a pop-up window, or trigger a JavaScript function. A hyperlink element, which is the A tag, is primarily used to navigate to another web page or another location on the same page. When a user clicks on the hyperlink, the browser typically loads a new page or scrolls to that specific location on the current page. So there you go, a more accessible version of the hamburger icon tutorial. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.